that, okay. that's the length of a Platonic year is 26,000? Yes, yes. So according to the most recent dating of that meteor crater in Arizona, it would have happened about one Platonic year ago, yes. And it's interesting that it did coincide with the last major expansion of the Ice Age, 26,000 years ago. And that, I think, is one of the most important things that w of the, the ancient legacy is I believe that human beings have been making observations of the heavens for thousands and thousands of years. And part of the, one of the most significant parts of the ancient or the archaic wisdom, the archaic knowledge, has to do with this knowledge of the great cycles, the cosmic cycles, the cycles of earth change. And I believe that that's not fantasy or superstition, it's, it's solid verifiable scientific information that we're actually receiving from thousands of years ago by our ancestors who were much actually in their own way as, a, as cultures much more intimately attuned to the workings of the heavens than we are today. Well there's a cycle here and we'll get into that. We'll get into that. That's part of what I want to go with this class. The sacred geometry. I want you guys to go home and practice what we did tonight because in two weeks we'll, we'll pick that up and we'll carry it on because what I'm going to what what we're going to work towards is we're going to develop our first of the master patterns, the master diagrams that link the cycles of time and space. To do that, we need to be able to draw beautiful, elegant, perfect squares, though, and circles. So that's what I want you to practice. Can you say that again? Master diagrams. Master patterns, master diagrams. No, this is, that's why I give, the, 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 the quote that I give at the beginning of this thing was from Heraclitus. He who would seek wisdom must investigate many things. So said Heraclitus 2,500 years ago. He was a contemporary of Plato. Yeah, and that's what we do. He, in this class, I'm looking at a broad array of things, and then behind that, I'm looking for the, 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 the patterns and, and the links to tie it all together. And, and, and sacred geometry is one of those very powerful ways of integrating knowledge from all kinds of different areas. And so that's kind of where I, I use the geometry as kind of a, a, a commonality between this astronomical stuff and this architectural stuff and this scriptural stuff and this geological stuff. You know, because when we talk about the great flood, you know, that's part of this whole tempo, this rhythm of cosmic catastrophes. And if you remember, I'm going to repeat it, I repeat it over and over again. Sacred geometry not only teaches us about the proportions of space, it teaches us about the proportions of time. And that's what we need to have an understanding of in order to grasp this cycle of earth change, is the proportions of time. And through the study of sacred geometry, we can see the unfolding cycles of time because the rhythms, the tempos of those are governed by the same numbers. So when we start exploring, see it's no coincidence that we measure a cube of, of 2,160 degrees, that we use the sacred unit, the mile, to measure the moon and discover that the moon is 2,160 miles in diameter, or that the length of the astrological month the age of Pisces, the age of Aquarius, is 2,160 years. See, the same number measures all of these disparate phenomena. The length of an astronomical age, 2,160 years. The length of, uh, I mean, the, the diameter of the moon, 2,160 miles. The measure of a cube, the model of the holy city, in degrees, 2,160 degrees. The number of nautical miles in the circumference of the earth, 21,600. You see, those are the sacred numbers that we discover by working with sacred geometry, and those sacred numbers are precisely the numbers that measure and tell us about the tempo and rhythms of these great time cycles. That's why, that's why I get into it. That's, it's for that reason. And, and, and at this point now, understanding these cycles of time, I think, is probably the most critically important thing that we can, we can study. For, what, for some reasons. We, we can go back and I, I'll show you this at a future slideshow. 250,000 years ago we start, the geologists, the, the climatologists have gone and taken core samples from the Greenland ice cap. 
Scott, you could hit the light there, would you? You're going to tell us what this is, though, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you know what? That, that's Romeo, March 26th. That, that was my third birthday. They detonated that 11 megaton hydrogen bomb. Who were they detonating that? That was the U.S. government. Where? In the, in the Pacific. In, in, yeah. Near where? Uh, Near. Nagasaki, um, no, no, no. That was in Japan. Nagasaki was the atomic bomb in Japan. This was at Bikini Atoll. Oh, that's right. Right, right. Um, what I was going to say was the Greenland ice cores, and this is where we're going to end it. In the Greenland ice cores, back in between 90, 90, 91, 92, 93, two teams of scientists, one group of Americans, one group of Europeans, went to Greenland. And they took cores of the ice from the surface down to the bedrock, 3, 000, over 3,000 feet thick of ice, actually 1,500 meters, which is over 4,000 feet. They took these cores out. And every year leaves a layer, just like tree rings leave a ring, right? They can go down and they can count the layers year by year, and they can examine those layers. And by looking at the soot and the dust and the chemicals and the gases that are trapped in those layers, they can tell things about temperature, about air currents, about all kinds of things. They can tell about changing temperature around the, in the northern hemisphere. And I'm going to show all this to you in more detail, but, the, 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 but what they discovered was this. In 250,000 years that they've now reconstructed the climate record back to, there has been no period of time longer than the one we're now in that hasn't had a catastrophe. There have been catastrophic climate changes occurring typically every six to 8,000 years for the last 250,000 years. We have now gone 10,000 years since the last global catastrophe. So what reoccurs every 6 to 8,000 astrologically? That would be, so remember the wheel with the four animals? Yeah. 6,480 years for each of those. Yeah, but what, what, I mean, what is it out there that happens every... That's, so we're, so we're overdue. The, we're overdue. The, exactly. If, 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 if we... Uh, I mean, if we're, if we're taking what the record says at face value, we would be overdue for something. A catastrophic climate shift, yes. So maybe we're doing well, I mean, well. everybody's predicting it. Are there supposed to be something big happen this way? Yeah, but see, again, remember I always tell the story of the boy who cried wolf. What happens is so many people are predicting things that don't come true that people are lulled into thinking that nothing's well, going to happen. Yeah.